Okay, good morning, everyone. It's uh, time to get started. Uh, welcome to this session of the Debt Networking Group, uh, uh, co-chaired by Lou Berger and myself, Janos Farkas. And uh, many thanks uh, to Eve Schuler, to our secretary, for her efforts, uh, especially in this uh, strange time for her uh, and uh, taking care of the minutes. Um, as this is uh, the, our second session, we are not, uh, it's the same, very same deck, but uh, we don't go to all the uh, slides. Uh, note well is very important to highlight though. Uh, so as a reminder, if you're not familiar with the note, well, please check. And uh, by participating the IETF, you actually agree to follow the IETF processes and uh, policies, which are captured by the note well. And as part of it, that uh, you acknowledge that everything you, you say and contribute becomes uh, part of our permanent uh, records. Uh, also, uh, would like to mention uh, that please act uh, respectfully uh, to our colleagues as uh, uh, described in detail in our conduct guidelines. Uh, and uh, please join the Miteco uh, on site as well. Uh, Maybe the on-site tool is more convenient uh, for the blue sheet. And we also would like to ask you to join the queue if you would like to speak up uh, on-site as well. Uh, makes the queue management a lot easier for everyone. Uh, also, uh, note-taking is a joint note-taking. So please uh, join us in the note-taking tool. Uh, the direct link is already in the chat window uh, for that. Uh, we had, this is the second session. We had one on Monday, which uh, primarily focused on the raw uh, discussions and uh, 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 documents. Uh, and we also got an intro from David Black or a summary about the open meetings uh, at the end of the Monday session. And uh, today in the second session is mainly about, uh, uh, well, the first thing is the requirements draft uh, uh, that is already a working group document and the, le uh, the rest are the all kinds of uh, solution proposals uh, being discussed in the open meeting as individual contributions uh, so far. Uh, I will not say more about the agenda, you can check uh, at your own. And uh, the first uh, uh, presentation is about the working doc uh, document and uh, for the non-working group documents, like the individual contributions, uh, please uh, focus on what you are addressing out of your, our charter and what is the change uh, compared to the previous version. And I would like to mention also that we introduce uh, or we apply the same idea we did on Monday that uh, we will set a timer a bit shorter than your uh, time on the agenda uh, for the presentation time to allocate and enable time for questions and uh, discussion. Uh, no need to repeat this one, uh, this one either. And we have not received liaisons as we discussed. We had the charter and my milestone discussion on Monday. Uh, and uh, it's always good to remind, I think everyone about the IPR uh, policies we follow. So please uh, keep that in mind and uh, to progress our work, it's not just the sessions. The mailing list is uh, really uh, essential. So please use that one. Uh, uh, and uh, we can have uh, interim meetings or additional meetings. Uh, we already have the open meeting series as uh, uh, we heard. And we mentioned uh, one thing about the row architecture uh, on a Monday that we try uh, to uh, conduct a discussion on the list, hopefully come to sorting out the outstanding items uh, uh, soon <laughs> this year. But if we don't manage to do that, maybe we set up an interim meeting and Lou and I were checking the calendar possibilities if we need to do that. And it looks like that the week of January 15 is the one that would make sense because this, this year is gone, practically speaking, given the holidays. And before that, it's not meaningful. Other, after that, it's getting busy. So that's... Uh, uh, stay tuned for that, but it would be really good to conclude it on the list if we can. Uh, so that's the intro part, and uh, with that, let's move on to the requirements. Uh, yes. Uh, 
Uh, if you yes, please, and you you, you tell me when to switch switch slide. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Pauline from China Mobile. Uh, it's a requirement for scaling the net next ice cream. Um, so uh, the document was updated from um, uh, zero, uh, th three to zero four, according to the discussion, and thanks to the open meeting, we got a lot of useful comments from Kiran, from David, and uh, from others, and we add some text to enhance the explanation of requirements. Uh, and some section has been renamed a little, uh, but we didn't add any new requirement or changing the uh, structure. Next slide, next slide please. Uh, so here's the main updates. We renamed the section uh, three section, and uh, uh, the main change uh, uh, happens to section 3.6, 3.7, and 3.8. And for the section four, we also add the reference to the uh, controller plan uh, draft. So next slide, please. So here's the uh, main change of the name of the three sections or subsections of the requirement. Um, first, we change the provide mechanisms not requiring uh, full time synchronization to strict time synchronization. And we change the name of requirement four uh, to add uh, the of bandwidth to demonstrate that uh, uh, tolerates the high utilization um, what it focus on. And uh, for requirement eight, we just change um, to support um, provisioning of multiple mechanisms. Uh, next slide, please. So here's uh, for the requirement four. Um, we try to make it clear um, of the requirement of high utilization of bandwidth. And um, it is to say that for the case, the bandwidth utilization is more than 75% uh, um, or and or up to near 100%. Uh, and we also considering the results required for the DANET are uh, usually res uh, reserved and it's not sure if there's any space for the queuing solution that can improve the bandwidth utilization based on the current method. Uh, but except CQF, uh, according to the existing work. So we uh, would like to make these um, items uh, be uh, uh, optional, yeah. So next slide, please. And for requirement six, uh, we add a paragraph to explain that the flow uh, fluctuation is focused on the DANET flows. Um, so we, uh, here's noting that, as the non dead flow or also can be massive and may have potential impact on the scalability of the DANET flows. Um, the instance is that uh, it caused a high utilization of the bandwidth and uh, surprising the possibility of more resource with reservation and uh, traffic steering of DANET flows. Um, and, but we assumed that uh, there will be the strategy in the ingress to deal with the non DANET flows and prevent the real-time influence on the data flows. So uh, it's just to say that we uh, have the strategy uh, to control what um, will be sent from the uh, ingress to the uh, middle network and also to the egress. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, for the requirement seven, we really um, had the problems to refine the requirement. Uh, several open meetings with discussion and several uh, emails in the mailing list um, because uh, the name is scalable to a large number of hops with complex uh, topology. Um, but when we try to evaluate the exi existing solutions by this requirement, we got some problems because uh, it relates uh, degrees, um, but not, not only yes or no to support this requirement. So uh, during our discussion, we find it, it's different understanding of how to evaluate this method. And we propose some criteria for the latency jitter and the routing calculation and the resource scheduling in the control plan, um, which didn't reach the consensus. Um, so for the current version of uh, 04, we just add a really little um, sentence 
um, in the existing um, version. But um, next slide, please. Um, but just to, after the cutoff, we also had a, a good discussion in the open meeting. And thanks to David for providing the new text. And we think that we, uh, uh, by adding the three um, paragraphs, uh, we solved the problems. So um, the third paragraph is to see that uh, from the uh, deliver delivering of the queues of the net, um, we explain the um, complex complexity of the uh, latency and uh, jitters um, requirement. So uh, for, for instance, the data queues is bounded by a constant, a fixed constant, constant per hole. So the end-to-end end latency bounds are a linear function. And uh, the fixed constant end-to-end end jitter bounds also I expected. And for the, uh, maybe the control plan, um, for instance, the RSVP to, uh, for the resource allocation, uh, maybe range from linear to um, potentially expon uh, ex uh, ex uh, exponential. Um, it uh, depends on what the case uh, is used for. For example, we just to to uh, uh, um, to reserve one flows along the path. It will be the linear uh, function. But if we uh, just to, uh, reserve all the flows, uh, it may be changed to a graph-based uh, questions. So it will be the potential uh, exponential, yeah, uh, complexity. So the different queuing mechanisms um, has a different properties, of course, uh, but we just focus on the end-to-end -end jitter bound, achievable um, latency bounds and, uh, and others. And, and all the three uh, of these areas are consideration in evaluation and selection uh, of the scalable standard queuing mechanisms. Um, but we didn't really give a uh, special criteria for it. So for uh, requirement eight, we just change some words. Uh, of, uh, it's, it's related to the description, change the heart to a strict. And uh, it's just to see we uh, may have two kinds of that uh, scenarios uh, in the very um, beginning of the requirement of this section. So uh, next slide, please. So we will uh, refine the document according to the last uh, open meetings. Um, as soon, maybe within uh, one week, if we uh, have no other comments on it. And uh, for the next version of the draft, the course thinks that we uh, it may be stable and mature enough to um, to request for the last call. Yeah. Thanks. And any comments? Nobody's in the queue. OK, well, thank you very much for the update. We look forward to uh, trying to wrap this document uh, up. So thank you for your uh, presentation and work. Hi, uh, hello. Uh, I will uh, present, present this session remotely. Uh, I'm sorry for that. Uh, uh, thank you, Chair, to give me this opportunity again uh, to present uh, the proposal, the line based uh, queue mechanism. Next, please. So, this version mainly contains the following updates. Add more co authors who are interested in this document and recommend the options three or four that are more suitable for large scaling requirements, given the relationship between the plant roots type and the delay level as well as a source bus interval and the delay level. Supplement the untimely mode, scheduling mode, and the, <coughs> the corresponding schedulability considerations. Give alternate queuing allocation rule for RPQ, and supplement the in queue rule and the D queue rule for each option. Update the evaluation table, and supplement the security considerations. Next, please. I gave you control so you can flip uh, yourself. Uh, okay, I will see that. Okay, I got it. 
so according to the related uh, uh, public available network analysis in the industry, we know that uh, the challenges of the existing queue mechanism, for example, the rate-based mechanism such as TS and ATS, CBS, have overestimated probabilities, and the CBS cannot even work independently due to positive cascade. And the TS and TS has scaling scalability issues and GCL operations. And the TS and ESA curve has uh, over provision issues. And uh, the priority based queuing scheme in different server network may have an unexpected worst case latency due to bust uh, accumulation and uh, positive miss cascade. So we introduce EDF scheduling to data node data plane to uniformly provide the bounded delay jitter by in time and untime mode. Uh, it belongs to TSM mechanism category load local shaping, uh, as uh, we just discussed. Most specifically, it is uh, delay based scheduling described in another category's book. So, in this page, we use two straightforward examples to understand the probable latency. In the first example, we admit 100 flows, each with packed size, say, multiple 1 microseconds per repeated service bus interval 100 microseconds. That means each flow will consume 1% bandwidth of the service rate C, and the service rate C has been consumed by all flows. So the worst case probable latency is 100 microseconds in the case of eligible arrivals. In the second example, we admit 10 flows, each with a packet size the same multiple 10 microseconds per repeated service bus interval 1 millisecond. That means each flow will still consume 1% bandwidth of the service rate C, but the service rate C has not been consumed by all flows to still get the, the worst case of probable latency 100 microseconds. Of course, more flows can be admitted but with large probable latency, for example, one millisecond. According to the above examples, we learned probable latency is generally determined by the admitted eligible bus aggregation and the service rate C. There are two resource types, one is the bus and the other is bandwidth. An important aspect of the queuing mechanism is to ensure or pick out eligible arrivals from all concurrent arrivals. So what is the probable latency provided by EDF? EDF can preset multiple probable latency. We term it as delay levels, uh, then limit the arrival constraint functions of all delay levels to meet the scalability condition. The arrival constraint function may generally be nickel bucket for each delay level. For example, for the delay level DI, uh, the BI RI is the fast bandwidth resource pool and can be allocated by flows that belongs to the delay level. Based on the choose data structure of the queue, such as sorted queue and the rotation queue, there are the following scheduling conditions with slight differences. Uh, but I will not, I will not uh, describe it in detail. So this is the option of rate controlled plus sorted queue. It is the classical EDF with the reshaping states maintained in the core. This is the option of read control plus rotation queue with uh, a coarse granularity sorting rules than option one. Uh, it also maintain reshaping states in the core. This is the option of latency compensation plus solid queue, and uh, the latency compensation is based on latency deviation E, it is the recommended option suitable for large scaling requirements. All flows arrived at the EDF scheduler are distinguished as eligibility or in eligibility based on the latency deviation E. So this is the option of latency compensation plus rotation queue. Uh, the latency compensation is also based on latency deviation E. 
uh, it is also the recommended option suitable for not scanning requirements. So this is another important update for this version uh, that is on-time scaling mode. The above option three and four described is working concern mode, uh, behavior, sorry, make the end-to-end -end latency less than D multiple hops, but may have large jitter. Uh, Antima model will be based on plant resistance time and latency deviation. To get a low jitter, Antima model may eliminate the bust accumulation, making buffer design more simple. Uh, the Antima model will not break the constraint function of flow. We can further implement the Antima model using two methods. The first one is the packet is scheduled by D plus E in the scheduler configured with Antima model. In this case, the end-to-end -end latency may be in the range from D multiple hops to D multiple hops plus DI. That is, it may exceed the packet deadline, but the exceeding one is less than the delay level one. The second method is the packet is scheduled by E in the schedule one configured with Antima mode firstly, then scheduled by D in the schedule two configured with Intima mode. In this case, the end-to-end -end latency may be in the range from D multiple hops minus DI to D multiple hops. So we can see both methods may provide the jitter of the delay level uh, one DI. Please come to the end of your presentation part, a uh, few seconds left to have some time for discussion. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry. So I will just... Uh, Okay. No, I, uh, I didn't write. You, you didn't. You didn't have to end immediately. <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry for uh, ne for next step. Uh, we. Uh, 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 try to uh, request W adoption for this one due to the content is uh, basically major. And we got uh, some uh, uh, interest of cooperation for this document. Thank you. Any questions and comments? Yes, one comment on the adoption part that uh, as we discussed uh, uh, at the end uh, on Monday session, uh, it is the subject uh, or, or a goal of the open uh, meeting series to come to a convergence on which queuing solutions to be selected by the working group, like based on what crit criteria. So we are not just starting adopting uh, yet. Yeah. And, okay, and something. I understand. One of, the, one of the pieces of work we're really hoping for that those discussions to provide us is an understanding of which of the solutions are competing and which are complementary or hitting solving different problem spaces. And that, I, I think that's a really important thing for that those discussions to bring to the rest of the working group. Uh, Thomas Eckert. So I, I start to feel that I would really like to have one example um, topology with a set of flows, a maximum set of flows, kind of the, the, the example. And then from each of the proposals that we have, a description on how the calculation for the latency guarantees that can be uh, given by the mechanisms have to be done. So otherwise, it's really hard to, to follow. Everybody is presenting it somewhat differently. Everybody is assuming a different amount of background that you have. So maybe that's one of the things we could discuss uh, in, in, in the side meetings, kind of a standard reference example and then the description for each of, of the mechanisms because I had in this one just was the first one here uh, on the slides uh, trouble to follow. Thank you. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, again, you are the presenter, so I'm giving uh, the control over to you. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, I, I will uh, go rapid for this slide. Uh, so this is the uh, takeoff mechanism. Uh, in this version, we have the following updates. Uh, supplement the pi for based time slot scheduling. Simplify the time slot mapping relationship to reduce maintenance and uh, advertisement cost. And uh, 
clarified for the states and the network engine, fixed the latency equation of a probe and end to end uh, supplement in time scheduling mode, update the evaluation table, and supplement the security considerations. Again, this proposal is an enhancement of uh, the TS and TIS, which has the scalability issues of GCL operations. Uh, this proposal will introduce a time slot type of resource to layer three and uh, related time slot based queuing and the scheduling mechanism and that another data play. It belongs to TS mechanism category, period digger scheduling. So TGF, we construct the time slot type of resources for each link for specific orchestration period instance. And we decap the orchestration period from the scheduling period. The later matches the actual hardware capacity of the device, requiring only a few landlord, uh, a few landlord being queues or a single pipe queue. For all landlord queues, they have equivalent uh, binary semantic open closed, no other semantic case. The past calculation is based on time slot resource reservation and each link and obtain a flexible mapping relationship between the income time slot and the outgoing time slot on each node. So for a unidirectional link from a local node to the downstream node, we may detect a single time slot mapping relationship, the outgoing time slot of local node's outgoing port, uh, to the ongoing center time slot of downstream was incoming port as the figure on the left side. All of them may detect the, the orchestration period of set relationship between adjacent the nodes as the figure on the right side. Uh, this relationship is independent with flows, but not an inherent attribute of the topology. It can be advertised in the network. Based on this relationship, PVU PTM can be deduced and used for the time slot resource reservation. Oh, sorry, uh, just to close the, the picture. Uh, please give me the control again. No, you stop. Uh, you stopped the presentation. Let me keep the control and tell me when to flip to next one. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, dude. So um, is it a good slide or should we move to another one? Yeah, this, uh, um, the, the previous one, previous one. Yeah, this. Uh, so on the network entry for each regulated sub-bust of specific flow, the reserved outgoing time slot of NI port is based on the idea in time slot of UNI port. For example, there are N states for N sub bus of the service bus interval of the specific flow. The network entry should take the closed idea in time slot based on the actual incoming time slot of the regulated packet. Next, please. So, uh, we introduce a pipe based scheduling. Pipe can conveniently support two scheduling modes, Antima mode and in time mode. Antima mode is used for low jitter purpose. In this case, packets should only be permitted to send at the beginning time of the reserved outgoing time slot J. This is actually similar to the load and loading queue based on scheduling. Uh, so the Rank of the packet equals to the begin time of the outgoing time slot Z, uh, where Z is the one closer to the arrival time. Next, please. For in time mode, it attempts to obtain lower end to end latency than the uh, guaranteed uh, worst case end to end latency. Some applications may have this requirement. In this case, Packets may have been sent before the beginning time of the outgoing time slot J. So the rank of the packet equals to the begin time of the outgoing time slot J, where J is the one closer to the arrival time plus E, uh, where E should be covered in the packet. Next, please. Uh, so this page shows the latency equi 
reservation of t graph according to the reservation of time slot on each hop. The end to end latency is in line with the hops and the GD is constant. Next, please. Uh, to meet the requirement of lots of service flows uh, that have different service bus interval by design, multiple instances of adjudication period. A TGRAF link can be configured with multiple TGRAF instances of each corresponding to a specific adjudication period length. The interval can be trained different nodes. It's based on the same adjudication period instance. Next, please. So this table is the evaluation of TIGA for uh, matching the large scale requirements. Uh, first, uh, no time synchronization is needed in the network. Uh, for the items related for large number of flows, uh, TIGA for never assumed that the world computing flows arrived simultaneously as some other mechanism assumed, but rather interleaves based on time slot or situation. So, TGRF can provide the best evaluation score to support a large number of flows. For the items with the seven large number of hops, the evaluation is also yes due to end-to-end -end latency that is in line with hops and the constant end-to-end -end JIT. Next, please. So again, this uh, proposal, the content is uh, basically made, uh, I would uh, Okay, I will, uh, according to the decision of the open group. Questions and comments? Okay, thank you. We have told us in the queue. Oh, yeah. So um, I wanted to repeat my comment from, from last time because this hasn't changed here, either in the uh, new ref of the document, and that's it. I think uh, if we would go forward with this, this is a single draft describing TCP IP, so two layers uh, that should be separated from each other, right? And that's basically what uh, my, my proposal is about, that this orchestration thingy is something that we should put on the edge and consider a different layer from the hop-by-hop -hop forwarding. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think we may uh, uh, discuss again in the very least uh, in detail. Okay, and we discussed the adoption part. So I suggest to move on to the next uh, presentation. Gino, please. Hello, everyone. I'm Gino Zhang. Uh, I will describe about the C-score. Uh, next slide, please. So this uh, pre presentation material has three parts. The overview of the C-score and the email discussions and the updates on the draft. The first part overview will be skipped. Next slide, please. Next, maybe go to the page six. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I will start from here. And uh, this is about the email exchange and discussion through the emails. Uh, we have quite a lot of email uh, exchanges for the CISCOR. Thank you everyone join, uh, who joined the email exchanges. There are quite a lot of topics, but I, uh, I, I just picked four of them. The first topic was about the validation of the pay burst only once property, uh, which is enjoyed by many rate-based queuing schemes such as ATS, deficit round robin, fair queuing, and the Cisco itself. So if you look at the, the mathematical expression on the second bullet, uh, yeah, where the B, large B, is the maximum burst size of the flow on the observation. And the large H is the number of hop count. So if you look at very closely, the B appears only once. So uh, that's why it is called pay burst only once. On the other hand, there are terms that are proportional to the uh, number of hop count. So basically, it is linear to the hop count, but the burst side itself is paid only once. However, uh, this nice property is not applied to any uh, scheme that tries to allocate per hop latency. Okay, 
That's because the latency bound in a single hope. If you, uh, if you ask what is the latency bound experienced in a single hope, then the burst appears again. So the sum of the bound in each hope is larger than the end-to-end -end latency bound. So that's the key property here. Uh, we have been trying to verify that property for a, a throughout the long uh, email exchange. So I hope everybody understand that. The second one was about the syscourse latency bound expression itself, as you can see there. Uh, we had a discussion based on the original paper, how to prove that. Uh, and with a specific network example provided by Torless. So yeah, it is validated. Another one was about the time difference compensation mechanism, which will be appeared in the next few pages. Uh, the effectiveness of that uh, compensation mechanism. And the finish time, the as a metadata, finish time can have range, precision, and how many bits are required. Those are discussed as well. Yeah, thank you. So this is uh, what has been updated in the draft. Uh, the first one is the addition of the total reserved service rate estimation with the metadata given. So there is a long history behind, but uh, I will skip it. Anyway, the, the scaling requirements draft, which Peng has, been, has just presented, uh, now include the resource allocation complexity. So it is not a data plane requirement, but anyway, a new when a new flow joins or leave, the resource allocation uh, can be a, a limiting factor for admitting that flow. So it is very important. And as you can see in the bottom or the last bullet, we added the metadata carried for syscore and packets can be used for estimating the total reserved service rate in a core node as in the following. The detail mechanism is described in appendix, but I don't think I have time to introduce that. Next slide, please. Thank you. So this is the second uh, update of the draft, uh, which is about the time difference uh, compensation mechanism. The time difference is defined like that. Uh, for a single packet, you measure the departure time of its own clock at the depart upstream node. And then the downstream node measure the arrival time of uh, that packet with its own clock there is a difference and this difference is called time difference. And it can be updated and compensated throughout the node. And we have been discussing with the email, with, especially with Andrea, and he gave the very uh, essence of what it is. So I appreciate Andrea and I put those sentences in the draft. Thank you. Next slide, please. And there is a added reference. Um, which is recently published in IEEE Access. The title of it is uh, Scalable Flow Isolation. So uh, in some sense, in deterministic networking, we are persuading the scalable flow isolation. And that is the title of that paper. And it includes uh, extensive simulation that validates this core. Uh, the paper has two topologies with the simulations. The first one is about nine nodes and maximum seven hope networks. And second one is uh, 80 nodes with uh, 16 maximum hope counts with lots of flows. And throughout the topology, we tried various delay factor functions. We compared with ATS, FIFO, deficit round robin and virtual clock itself. And with the non conserving co-stateless fair queuing, which was uh, suggested by Stoic uh, a long time ago. And in every setup, Cisco performs almost the same as the stateful virtual clock. And it's much superior to anything else. And it meets the theoretical and the latency bound. Okay, uh, I have about one minute left, but I will stop here. The appendix may be too long to explain. Yeah, you can take a look. Thank you very much.
Questions? Yeah, Thomas Eckert, just wanted to rant against the IETF that I would love a lot of these wonderful pictures to show up in an RFC. Maybe you actually can kind of convert the SVG. So I think there is there is good uh, uh, explanation text, yeah. It's okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, you actually had a couple of minutes more, but for a question, if you want to do anything else. So again, we're setting the timer to leave a couple of minutes of discussion. Uh, if there's no discussion, the speaker can use this the time. Next slide. Right, so the goal here is to um, pick up again on what I introduced last time with the uh, very quickly hashed up slides. Um, and so the whole idea is to think about how we can achieve a high utilization uh, with um, uh, bounded latency traffic in networks uh, with tightly bounded jitter um, uh, forwarding mechanisms. Um, and so this time we, we only updated the slides uh, and, and not the presentation. Um, and in general, I think um, when, when people start to think about it, uh, what's being presented here is this time division multiplexing. Yet it is, but primarily in the control plane, right? So it doesn't uh, make anything in the forwarding plane of the mechanisms TCQF, CSQF that we're proposing any more difficult. Um, and um, it's also becoming quite popular uh, as mechanism to increase utilization in other domains. So um, if you click on that, um, a picture, I'm not sure if it actually works during the presentation, but uh, this is in the PDF as well, then then you'll see this wonderful, nice autonomic car intersections where all the cars are crazily driving through each other and so not colliding. And that effectively happens when we do have um, slotted forwarding of packets because uh, all these packets can go through the routers and uh, not intersect with each other, and not build up queues, which we normally also have uh, on these intersections. Next slide. So here is uh, hopefully a much better worked through example, and uh, maybe it's not uh, that easy to understand it all the way through a, a, a run here, but a typical um, large metro aggregation network, uh, maybe uh, 30 routers, each of them aggregation for 100 nodes, and independent of uh, what particular um, advanced scheduling algorithm we're using, we still have the problem that from each of the incoming interface, there can be uh, a packet uh, competing uh, on the outgoing queue uh, arriving at the very same time and none of the queuing mechanisms can basically compensate for that. So what we're having is that we're building up on every hop um, a, a latency um, just because of the large scale topology that is in this case, for example, uh, worst case 1400 packet and then the serialization time for that. And uh, if we do want to support large bursts like back to back uh, 10 or 20 packets, then of course um, this problem uh, scales up with the number of packets we have. Um, and if we do uh, do uh, forwardings like uh, weighted fair queuing and other so-called in-time mechanisms where packets aren't delayed on a per hop basis, then um, the jitter also increases by uh, X10. Um, so this is basically uh, the problem we're trying to solve, that we do uh, create ever larger jitter, and uh, because of uh, the, the jitter also the um, aggregate end-to-end -end latency. Next slide. So how would TSN avoid this? What TSN does if we have uh, CQF, for example, in TSN is that on the ingress side, on the senders, we have a gate through which you can exactly control at which point in time a packet is being sent and therefore uh, in which cycle it comes. And then basically the admission controller can calculate which of the flows admitted to the network is going to go into which cycle. So that's when they're kind of entering the, the ring, they're all nicely coming after each other because they're only delayed on the sender. Actually, we do have that on the highways in the US, right? Before you're entering um, a highway there, you're queuing up uh, so that you're not having to queue up uh, on the following um, uh, intersection, highway intersection points, but uh, only on the ingress side. And that keeps the overall network hop by hop forwarding very simple, CQF, TCF cycle based, right? Um, now, um, the way that TSN does this is uh, still with a, a per flow uh, based forwarding um, and the um, flow, and, and they also, 
kind of to to support their scheme uh, have the option of need to do this to do this delay within the topology right and that's exactly the complexity that we do want to avoid right we do want to have this additional complexity this layer of explicit delay uh, to get into a certain cycle only on uh, the sender but not within the topology right um, next slide right so um, when we go beyond cyclic queuing um, which CQF, TCQF, CSQF, where this is uh, very simple. Um, we have proposed uh, mechanisms like GLBF, which is damper based, um, and uh, GLBF being the generic damper algorithm for one particular calculus, and namely the TSN ATS calculus, because that makes the queuing and the uh, algebra very simple. But this scheme here applies to any of the dampers, right? The dampers, like the cyclic queuing, have the benefit that you can very exactly predict the time that a packet will be on every hop. So you're just creating yourself cycles logically in the controller. Now it becomes just a control plane solution and you have eliminated the need for per hop clock synchronization within the ring. You of course still need clock synchronization across that layer of um, timed gates on the senders, but that's now only on the edge nodes. Those edge nodes could be radio towers or the routers associated with it. Those nodes do need clock synchronization anyhow, whereas the core routers here in a, a metropolitan backhaul network may not have it now and wouldn't need it in the future if we would go for this more advanced solutions. But again, these more advanced damper solutions, I haven't seen high speed um, you know, uh, validations yet. So next slide. So summary, right? So um, those in-time queuing things, um, dampers or a cyclic queuing, they do enable flow interleaving. Um, <clears throat> and that's, I think, why they're a, a great thing. But the gates on the edge that uh, this flow interleaving mechanism proposes, they're equally valuable for in-time queuing, just not for interleaving the flows, but um, anywhere in the network, but you can still use it as a great way to interleave flows when you aggregate them, right? So all the flows from one ingress to one egress, they can still uh, use these timed gates so that you're interleaving them on the ingress and you have one big aggregated flow going through the network that is nicely shaped out and has a minimum burst size, right? So that's why I'm thinking that these timed gates and this concept of, you know, point-to-point -point aggregation for any queue mechanism or the interleaving um, uh, for um, the cyclic queuing and the dampers, I think this should be a different layer, uh, different functionality in the DeadNet architecture. And uh, hopefully we can get to the point of seeing how much we can clone from TSN for that, which obviously has this function. All right, that's it. Thank you. Questions? Uh, okay, uh, I'm Jufen Zhao from CICT. Uh, I will present uh, the draft about the enhanced use cases for the scaling uh, deterministic network. Uh, next, please. Okay, uh, here's agendas. Uh, including three, uh, four parts, introduction, uh, summary, uh, some, uh, discuss the enhanced use cases and the network requirements, and uh, summary is the clarification of different ratios application. And the next step, okay, next slide. Uh, okay, uh, introduction. As we know, uh, IETF uh, issues uh, RFC uh, 8578, which covered a variety of the society of the uh, pro, uh, was a professionals audio, radio, and uh, electricals, uh, cellular radios, my, uh, mining industry, and so on. Uh, but for uh, these drafters, uh, we try to discuss the use cases and network requirements out of, after of the existing RFC. Uh, okay, next slide. Yeah, it's a in, uh, it's a including uh, machine vision, radio controls for industrial and the crowd AR VR games and living streams for uh, high experience videos and the computing uh, wireless uh, application as well. 
and analyzes uh, SLO's requirements and the desirable behaviors in enhanced standards for the three type of use cases and application. Okay, next slide. Uh, let's move on to the use cases. One is motion vision for industrial. Uh, motion vision is used as uh, AI technologies as a machine to replace uh, human eyes to the product uh, quality inspection, uh, which involves images, captures, and, and and uh, intelligent mm, detections at age and the AI training at private and public crowded. Uh, on, in this, those processes, industry cameras, images are uh, required high uh, definition and with little or the no compression uh, and high bandwidth is required. Yes. On the other hand, the real time related monitoring function is required high speed connectivities. Uh, so the requirements of the uh, machine vision is the delay sensitive and high reliability. For example, the is delay less than the 10 is 10 milliseconds. Yeah, okay, next slide. Okay, uh, use cases two is remote control industrial uh, uh, internet. Oh, okay, the, pet, uh, the typical application of remote control is the crowd basis PLC. The PLC stands for the programming logical controller. Its field programming and control function is, trans, is transmitted to the crowd basis, uh, the centralized management in future. and. Uh, Mm, deterministic forwarding is, is uh, re required. So the uh, requirements of, net, of networks uh, for a remote control is delay and jitter sensitive and a high reliability. Uh, for example, uh, the jitter uh, less than 100 milliseconds and, uh, and the delay is less than 10 uh, milliseconds uh, for, uh, for control, uh, for control uh, command. Okay, next slide. Uh, use cases three is crowd AR AR for high experience radio. Okay, the for uh, for good performance and experience, the uh, the rendering and string control, uh, rendering strings control consists of the crowd processing, network transmission, and the terminal uh, processing. So the the requirements of Cloud AR and BRs depend on the, the different of the level of the, of the experience. Uh, in, uh, in the strong in actions uh, scenario, uh, the bad network performance is desired. For example, the delay uh, less than the 15 uh, milliseconds, but for com comfortable experience, the delay uh, at the least uh, uh, less than uh, 15 milliseconds. Next slide, okay. Uh, use cases for is crowd game for high experience radio. The online games the technology spaces of crowd com, uh, compete. Uh, uh, X crowd is a comp company that enables the lightweight to the devices to run the high quality game. The game's experience depends on the high quality and the low latency network environment. So the requirements of the uh, uh, cloud games uh, is depends on the level experience. Uh, for example, for level of the e support, e support uh, means uh, uh, means the online games competition. Uh, the delay is. Uh, the delay uh, less than the 60 milliseconds, but for junior level, it's delay uh, less than uh, 150 milliseconds. Next slide, please. Okay, next, uh, call, uh, next uh, uh, the user case is five and the cloud living streaming for the high experience video. Uh, for scenarios such as a consent, a press conference, and support events, the cloud live streams use 5G band, high bandwidth to transmit us VR radios. The requirement of it is a uh, is, uh, is, uh, bandwidth and delay sensitive, uh, like uh, delay less than uh, 200 milliseconds and band, uh, bandwidth at least uh, the one, uh, 100 million. Next slide. Uh, okay, summary. Uh, this is uh, about uh, analysis of network requirements. We summary seven typical scenario: uh, the remote, the public, uh, the re uh, uh, productions control in park, uh, 
uh, remote control video AI in production, production monitoring, production connection, VR and VR radios, and, and so on. Um, as the figure shows, the different levels of applications have the diversity uh, SLA's requirements. Uh, overall, the main character characterized of the enhanced dead net, dead network use cases uh, is the crowd basis applications and the remote control. Uh, in terms of the industrial industry deployment for smart grid and high isolation, low latency, jitter, and the synchronization is demanded. Uh, for industrials, low latency, jitter, and high reliability and high bandwidth uh, is desired. Uh, as to the customers in, in entertainment, the so high bandwidth and low latency is demanded. Uh, for computing the so wild applications, the hand batteries and low latency jitter and uh, the high reliability is demand. Okay, next slide. Oh, next steps, uh, any uh, feedback, suggestion, and comments and discuss, that's all. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Okay, uh, uh, oh, sir, uh, 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 of the Salam. Yes, uh, regarding... Uh, we lost you. Okay, sorry. Oh, there we go. Yeah, regarding the data or the, the, the bandwidth uh, and uh, the delays uh, mentioned, uh, are they uh, real uh, experienced uh, uh, figures or uh, numbers? Uh, as uh, you mentioned, 20 milli, less than 20 millisecond or 15 mil. Uh, I need to be. I just need to be sure because usually we, in my country, we didn't test it. But uh, it will be nice to, to know uh, was this uh, these figures tested already or it's uh, st statistical. You know, as uh, uh, I had some contacts, I I asked. So some of the engineers in UK, but some say that not 100% we can get these uh, figures. I need uh, some answer from uh, the author, and thank you very much. I think I've seen, uh, so thank you very much. This is very nice. Actually, again, the slides are not nicer than the, uh, um, the, the uh, text and HTML, so maybe if you if you want, we can tell you how you get these nice graphics into the draft, but only useful when we do adopt. <laughs> I right? think so, enough on that point. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, no, um, I think I've seen similar um, sor sources from other references, so you probably didn't collect this in, in one evening yourself, so maybe you add also for the prior comment uh, the references where you had this from, and I think we can, I think, also find more, more references there might be differences in what uh, some of these are saying, but I think this is certainly a very good set of applications that we uh, didn't all consider in, in the original DeadNet use cases. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So all of the, uh, I think the data and the indicators may reference some from CISA 3GPP and maybe some um, some is uh, refer uh, refers to the uh, maybe some research report. Yeah. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, uh, I view this as a addition or an expansion on the use case RFC. Yeah. Uh, that use case RFC has a uh, section which sort of summarizes common themes. Yeah, I think yeah. I, I went to look it up. I believe it was either chapter 11 or 12. Yeah. Have you seen any impact to that section based on these new cases? Mm. Yes, now it's not yet. Maybe we will maybe add it. I at this part for for next version. I think that that would be, I think, a really uh, very helpful because yeah, yeah. Um, that summary helped us understand yeah. how the different use cases uh, need to be supported by our mechanisms. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. If there's no impact, okay, this is interesting. It's great to document, oh, okay, okay. but there's no impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If there is impact, that's really important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe add this part for next version. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Abdul Salam. One more. Yes, uh, uh, so I understood from your answer that uh, it's uh, the, the, the data is uh, referenced by the 3GPP. That's, uh, uh, 
I hope I can get uh, some of the uh, reference or pointer to the references you used. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have uh, Kwan. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, this is Chuan Shong from ZT. Uh, the topic is uh, the differentiated data queues. Next slide, please. Uh, so, uh, as we just uh, uh, presented by Jun Feng, uh, we have uh, another advanced, uh, uh, enhanced uh, use cases. And so, we uh, must uh, consider what uh, enhanced goals for the cloud. And so, as we were long that the pr primary goal for uh, the cloud queues is uh, the um, banded latency, uh, packet loss ratio, and uh, the out of order packet. So, um, if the new enhanced use cases will bring a new goals for the cloud, so uh, we provide some. Uh, Two main uh, new goals for the lead. Um, first one is uh, we must uh, provide various deterministic uh, services with the uh, differentiated SLA in scaling networks. For example, uh, different application uh, applications will be coexisted in uh, use ca in a uh, use case. For example, the uh, electrical utilities they will have many. Uh, applications with uh, different SLA or uh, bandy latency requirements. And the uh, different applications will differ in network topologies and the, the uh, SLA uh, requirements. And the different uh, flows with, uh, within an application uh, will demand uh, differentiated uh, different uh, deterministic uh, SLA. They say this may be uh, such, uh, there may be such uh, different use, uh, cases uh, uh, in the, uh, f f from the, the enhanced use cases. And the, the second one is that uh, to achieve this uh, goal for different levels of applications, we need to consider to uh, support high ut utilization of the lateral work uh, resources. Uh, uh, for example, make reasonable use of resources uh, and uh, carry more traffic in deployment and uh, to make more money for opera operators uh, and their, their uh, service providers. So this is the new, goal, uh, new goals for the deadlet. So last slide. So uh, as discussed uh, just now from the new uh, Use case, uh, use cases. We, uh, we can, we need to consider the new goals for that lead, and then it will uh, bring uh, bring up some new requirements. For example, uh, this has been mentioned in the scaling requirement. Uh, for example, we need to support different levels of applications with uh, different SLA requirement, and then. We will, uh, this different levels of uh, applications will demand different data technologies, for example, the different queuing mechanisms. And so uh, we need to consider if we should or if we lead to uh, uh, enhance our data queues. For example, uh, the data uh, queues. The primary data queues uh, may be classified into several uh, um, classes, and then different classes will be matched to uh, different uh, behaviors and uh, technologies. Uh, next slide, please. So this is a, a, a consideration about the enhanced data queues. For uh, from the left table, uh, we can see that different uh, different applications will have different S SLA requirements, and uh, from the right table, we we can see that uh, we uh, maybe the queues can be classified and uh, divided into several traffic classes, and uh, each class may be uh, divided uh, into several subclasses, and uh, 
after each class uh, may demand uh, dif different uh, different uh, mystic for wording behaviors. Uh, for example, we may have a G uh, jitter guarantee, uh, delay guarantee, or low jitter low uh, delay guarantee, or ultra uh, low uh, delay low uh, jitter guarantee. So this is just this is just an, an example. Uh, so last slide, please. So we. Uh, we, uh, we would like to start some discussions about these uh, uh, requirements for the data queues and their comments and discussions are very welcome. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Questions, comments? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kiran. Related to my work, do you have any requirement about interface from end systems to .NET? Or is it something would you like to consider? So uh, do you mean that uh, the, the use case where the queues can cover your, uh, your that the interface you proposed? Yes, I mean, uh, I'm not forcing for it, but I'm asking that is it something worth considering? Actually, it's a question for the group that how applications or end systems will interface with that net. Yeah, we, we, we didn't cover that yet, but I think the, uh, the use case you proposed has been covered and, the, uh, and the you proposed in the mailing list, the applications de uh, differ uh, in their topologies and their SLA requirements. I think this is common uh, between uh, the, the, uh, your use cases pro, uh, you, you have mentioned. And the, uh, you have uh, also mentioned that the flows uh, within uh, 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 and single application also will uh, have different uh, band latency requirements. Yes, I mentioned. I mentioned. I also mentioned in the, this uh, that queues requirements. So I think the, these two uh, aspects has has been covered. But interface, we didn't. Cover. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank, thank you. In looking at this and looking at the document, it, I read it as you're trying to come up with specific classes for use in DetNet. Yeah. And that's quite different from, uh, you know, a class-based service is very different from what's in the DetNet architecture where we yeah. have per flow service, which can then yeah. can be aggregated. Yeah. Right. It looks like you're, you're moving away from that. Is that your intent? <laughs> yes. So I think that you really have to talk about, uh, yeah. uh, the impact to the architecture, and this is a fundamental change. Yeah, so next slide, last slide is about the solution. It will impact the flow. Yeah, but I'm not sure it's that net. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank we you. Can, we can discuss in Wait. details. Yeah. That would be great. That'd be yeah. great. And uh, uh, I, for me, I'd like to better understand the, the motivation you know, you could have a solution that's at the queuing, you know, virtual output queues and virtual virtual queuing is, is something that's been in industry for many, many years and it's gotten us to, you know, 64K queues per interface on some implementations. But so it, underneath being able to break, you know, to, to go from individual flows into some hierarchy of queuing, that all makes sense in an implementation. But what I'm reading here is a fundamental change in our service architecture. Yeah, no, I think the the main uh, the main motivation there have two two uh, two aspects for past, uh, the first one is we want to resolve the scalability issues <laughs> because I uh, we think that the aggregate uh, flow also has uh, scalability issues and the second one is that we we uh, want to provide the fine uh, grained uh, Traffic scheduling and the resource uh, management. Fine grain. How, how are you doing fine grain when you're doing class based? Yeah, <laughs> this is the initial uh, solution. For for me, and uh, I'm speaking as contributor, not chair. Yeah. I think it would be very useful to understand where you're seeing things break down in aggregation, and where the model, the service model, needs to to change. That would be helpful. 
Uh, and then I don't recall seeing the fine grain concept. So maybe I'll look, look for that in the next version. OK, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, we have one more uh, yeah. in queue. Wait, 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 get to the, to the <laughs> mic, please. Uh, here, I try to give some uh, uh, use case uh, to answer uh, the chair's question regarding like uh, the fine green things. The things Remember, like... that was a contributor comment, so it's not chair. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the things like uh, um, uh, some people mentioned the 3GPP, actually, you know, in the 3GPP community, it's already got a project done. It's called uh, to make 5GS as a logical dead node. So it's like a black box, but then within there are so many flows that is having, that is requiring the different QS specs like the, the per hop behaviors, basically called, like per hop delay, or the bandwidth, or jitter, all kinds of things. Actually, there are liaison between 3GPP and this group, I think, enough uh, last year, and then got something there already. So that is requ actually requiring per hop behavior, and plus the fine green things, as you uh, mentioned. Thank you. Okay, it's, to me, it sounds like you just said that you're doing using the virtual node concept that we've had for a long time also in the IETF. Uh, uh, not the just the, so the node is per hop behavior, but the granularity actually is per flow. Because uh, in the 5G system, it got the, the PDU session. So it's like a flow. Okay, if you could yeah. send more to the list so that everyone can understand that, that would be great. Okay. Thank okay, you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Okay, uh, this is uh, the, uh, the solution consideration for that. Uh, the mentioned that that queues. So we proposed the, the traffic engineering extensions for for the enhanced that that next slide, please. So let's first discuss about uh, the traffic engineering for that uh, As uh, as I noticed that for uh, as per the uh, RFC uh, three two seven two bs, the uh, that uh, can be seen as a special. Uh, branch over t uh, traffic en uh, engineering because it uh, uses the the existing uh, traffic engineering technicals. For example, the the ex explicit uh, paths and the, the uh, uh, resource al locations, and uh, then uh, but they the the, the death net also has the accessibility concerns. For example, the it uh, demand. Uh, they should uh, ha, uh, maintain a, a large number of their station information, and uh, it will be challenging for, for operators to, to for the network events uh, such as the faults. And then even uh, that led support the aggre aggregation aggregated flows. It still requires a large number of the control signaling. So uh, this is uh, the, the uh, main concerns for the existing DATLAT uh, technologies. Last slide, please. So uh, what's the new uh, traffic engineering requirements? Uh, first, uh, we just uh, mentioned that the, the uh, new goals for the DATLAT queues, they will uh, may be classified and may demand different uh, queues behaviors. And uh, uh, the characteristics of the scaling data networks will have two uh, main uh, problems, including the scaling flows and the scaling networks. So it will bring uh, new traffic engineering requirements for that lab. Uh, for example, uh, we need to provide path steering to forward the packet and uh, uh, provide different uh, behaviors to, uh, for data plane to achieve their, their uh, differentiated data lab queues. And uh, we uh, lead to resolve the, the scalability issues. And uh, uh, for the resource management, we, uh, we may uh, consider the time-based uh, SL, SLA requirements because we have new time-based queuing mechanisms. And uh, we need to consider the, uh, the reasonable use of uh, resources because operators want to make more money. And uh, we uh, also need to uh, consider the end-to-end the -end roads establishment uh, because the less scaling uh, the scaling networks will um, will be multi-domain or cross-domain, and uh, the past computations will uh, will be considered the multiple metrics, and uh, the past planning with the resource reservation will be considered by the, the queuing mechanisms. So, this is this is the uh, we uh, try to 
at least uh, all the possible uh, requirements for traffic engineering. So last slide, please. So we also uh, try to uh, provide the solution uh, consideration from the three T elements for the police, uh, po post for the policy, uh, the routing uh, policy may be uh, may include the bandit latency constraint based routing, uh, including uh, multi-domain uh, routes, inter-domain routes, or distributed uh, routes. So, uh, and for the past during, uh, as we just discussed, we uh, we proposed the per-class traffic and uh, scheduling, and uh, then the mystic latency information. Uh, may be provided uh, for the encapsulation. This has been discussed in that lab. And the last one, the resource re measurement. Uh, because we have the new 10 based QE mechanisms uh, with uh, and the DRAM uh, mailing QE mechanisms, so we should to provide the generic resource ma uh, management, for example, the 10 based resource aware control and forwarding. And uh, this is the, the uh, solution consideration from the, the, the uh, three T elements. So last slide, please. So the main uh, uh, proposal for for the uh, T extension, uh, we we uh, ensure the uh, the differentiated that led aware of traffic engineering. This is the extensions, and uh, uh, we compare it uh, compare the that led and the, the T extensions, for example, uh, as just discussed, maybe that led uh, is uh, proposed to the per flow or ag flow aggregates based uh, queues. And uh, we then, uh, if we need to consider the differentiated data queues and uh, uh, the, the existing TE, which has been uh, uh, used in .NET is per flow or aggregate TE, and uh, maybe we can consider the per class TE. And uh, uh, what what the, the motivation and the benefits? We think uh, there are uh, two aspects. Uh, for example, the the scalability problems uh, to support the different levels of applications and uh, achieve the fine grained time based resource and the traffic. Uh, as a scheduling, so to uh, to meet the bandit lat latency requirements and to rational utilize uh, achieve the rational utilization of our resources and improve their network performance. This is the main benefits. So uh, we initiate this the work. Uh, we think that it it main uh, it not just for that lead. Uh, the solution and the requirement may be common for other technology technologies or other working groups. So we may seek feedback in this working group and the uh, initial the discussion for the uh, requirements uh, and the, the extensions for, for TE. Uh, comments and the discussion are very well. Thank you. Follow Secret. So I, th I think it, it'll be hard to, to not 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 invest a lot of effort to validate or invalidate many of the claims that you're making as opposed to that this is different and new from DeadNet given that DeadNet already has a wide variety of mechanisms that it can do. So for example, the all the past work that, that we've been presenting here has been around all of this bounded latency, but you don't have to have bounded latency to call a DeadNet, right? You may just have pre-op uh, and bandwidth guarantee or even pre-op without bandwidth guarantee and you're just doing over provisioning and all these things, right? So we have various subsets and uh, many of the things may just be subsets of what we already have in DeadNet. So I'm maybe just to counter Lou, I'm, I'm not even sure if there is more than DeadNet. There may be just you know new names that you're giving to subsets of that that net that that we're already having. So, but yeah, the the full analysis takes more time. So I think I'm going to agree with your disagreement with Lou. So I'm going to disagree with myself. You know, the comment that was made earlier about 3GPP, uh, I uh, triggered a thought. Is is that we could also look at this just as a form of aggregation. Uh, we have many ways of doing aggregation of services, and you're just saying instead of doing full six-tuple classification, you want to do one-tuple classification where the one-tuple is on DSCP. 
that, and I, I think you were, Torless, you're saying it's already supported. And I think maybe you are, and you're saying, and from your drafts, it becomes, this is a applicability of debt net as opposed to a change of debt net. So I'm going to disagree with my earlier comments. So thank you to, uh, for coming up with the three GPP one, because that changed my, my perspective. So that was good. And, and again, by the way, as individual. And, and by the way, there was this, this side meeting about traffic engineering. So there were the one thing which I was jumping up to was this traffic engineering. If you do all the complex things together, which we can also do in DeadMed, but we don't have to do. So I do think there would be value for marketing purposes of DeadNet to kind of have better understanding about the fact that, you know, um, different type of applications and use cases would only need to use different subsets of what DeadNet has to offer and maybe even simple examples of that, right? And so that might be in between these uh, different classes of new use cases or old use cases and this type of classification, but the underlying mechanisms would all be, I think, hopefully already all be DeadNet plus what we want to do for large scale DeadNets. Abdul Salam. Okay, welcome to. One, one more. One more. Uh, yes, uh, uh, I think in the, this presentation, also maybe in the uh, the, the, the previous one, uh, there is a difference between uh, uh, service class or uh, uh, traffic flow. So when we are using the, the the traffic engineering, we are usually focused on the flow, not the uh, the class, but uh, I've seen in the presentation mentioned uh, uh, the class uh, or the service class, not the flow. So I hope uh, we get explanation for that. Uh, sorry, I didn't quite catch uh, the, the, the volume. I, I think he's just looking for more information uh, on the description of the class usage yes. versus the per flow usage. And, you know, if we, if based on the comments, if we look at that as a form of aggregation, if you could describe that in that context, that would be helpful. Okay, thank you. So and we have our last, uh, uh, the last slot now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And, yeah. uh, while you're coming up, I'm going to just want to make a comment about that we've been having uh, a side discussion on when the next meeting on the queuing is going to be. Uh, David has a suggestion on how to get us to some taxonomy and wants to uh, uh, solicit some help, some help. We will probably have a meeting in December about it in the second week of December. And uh, we may or may not call that a formal interim. We'll figure that out this week or, uh, but stay tuned to the list for that. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Rubin Liu. I'm from HS Racing. I'll introduce the program of the draft uh, of git reduction mechanism and the, the, well, the, the result of while in our lab. Next, please. Uh, the draft has been modified in version one. We have added uh, decorating uh, method for very distant delay process and uh, on how uh, the revolution contributing enhancement network uh, to bustiness. The highlight uh, is that we implemented uh, the solution in H3C router. Next, next slide, please. Uh, there is a simple instance. So how it work? First, uh, we collecting the transmission delay between the talk and uh, the listener. Second, we add uh, reserve the delay on the transmitting delay of the longest the pass, refer as the pass reference delay. Third, we calculate the upper limit of the compressing delay for each pass. Uh, fourth, we collecting the actually transmitting delay of the date packet during, during the transmitting process, exclude the fixed the interdomain transmitting delay. Fifth, at the composite node, calculating the regular composite delay based on the actually transmitting delay of the data packet and the, the upper limit of the composite delay. And finally, we performing the composition at the composite node, which uh, uh, close to the listener. 
why the compassing at the last note, the first reason is to is reduce the data caused by various reason, which inherits network deploy to flex or change different opinion me mechanism and the network considering the method. The second reason is minimize end-to-end -end latency. Each composition uh, requires a reference value and uh, composition redundancy must be considered. If a deep package undergoing multiple uh, rounds of delay composition, it will increase the overall delay. So composition should uh, ideally only be performed once close to the listen. The third reason, the third reason is to achieve the best result with the minimized cost and the resource constraint. No matter, we know, no matter why the delay compensation takes place, there is always possible that multi transpiling data to be quened, resulting in the quening delay that reduces the effectiveness of transmitted delay of, of the compensation. So compensation at very large of the network should should a uh, uh, better approach to reduce end-to-end -end data. And uh, to achieve the best result with the smallest cost. Next slide, please. Um, the thing one is the network in our lab. We add additional transmission delay of 50 milliseconds on the uplink and uh, 46 milliseconds on, on the lower, li uh, lower link uh, use the sprint device. So we can get uh, the max pass relay uh, and uh, set the, uh, the, 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 the pass reference delay as uh, 51 milliseconds. We, uh, we constructing uh, 50 DTNet flow with a total bandwidth of one gigabit per second and uh, with packet size of 1,280 bytes with the background flow of 100 gigabit per second with random, random packet size from 16, 64 to uh, 9,600 bytes. Um, the test operator is performing uh, link, link fault simulation uh, on pass one and, or pass two. The test result we got all data value on the test are lost uh, less than 12 microseconds with the composition. While the max the data uh, exceeds uh, two, uh, two, two million seconds without the composition. Next slide, please. So we can see the draft have a lot of benefit. It can be applied to either single domain or multi-domain. Time synchronize is necessary only between the ingress gateway and the egress gateway within the same domain, not all, uh, not all the node in the same domain. Time synchronize is only required within each synchronized domain, not between domains. The egress and the egress node collect the actually transmitting delay in each domain, competing the Transmitting delay at the competition node click to the listener. Next. So feedback and the collaboration are highly welcome. We are looking for how some how you work with us to complete the draft. Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Are you assuming time is a the latency is accumulated in the control plane or in the data packets themselves? Um, yes, we, the, we use the control plane to calculate the, 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 delay, the, delay, the delay pass. 
Okay. Do you see that we need to change anything then to make it work other than to make this solution work other than uh, ensure that the control plane can provide that information? Mm, yes, we, we, the next slide, I, the backup slide have the, uh, we have added the, add the uh, what you clerk reference to, to uh, plane to the, to the control plane to calculate the, 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 the delay path. Okay, so you, in this document, you'd like to see a control plane solution to calculate latency across the network yeah. or to propagate yes. latency yes. across the yes. network. Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, thinking for uh, advice about the things here, about uh, based on your explanation, since you're going to accumulate the delay until the, the edge, edge node to do all in one work here. Uh, but still, uh, back to the, uh, the previous discussion about the, for the for a logical data node from the 5GS side, it, it's going to join the, the IP domain as a, a, a data node. So uh, it's looking for per how behavior. And if that power behavior has already exceed uh, its uh, SLA, will you still put the 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 dis uh, the discarding work toward the end of the edge, or you prefer uh, or we prefer to do the work uh, on the that nano itself? Uh, sorry, I can't. Okay, so it seems like uh, if one uh, one node has already exceeded its SLA, cannot, basically the, the system cannot satisfy its SLA. Based on your proposal, you say, okay, well, you're still going to accumulate until the, the large edge node. So, so what is the you know, pros and cons? Like uh, where are you going to drop your, your, uh, the, the packet? So. Okay, okay. We, we are over time, it seems. Uh, uh, maybe let's continue maybe offline on the list. Yeah, oh, no. On the okay. list, please. Yeah, okay. maybe Thank better you. to understand. And many thanks for everybody yeah, for the. Thank you. Thank you. Many thanks for everybody for the contribution. And uh, let's uh, keep continuing our work and uh, stay tuned. Uh, discussions on the list and contribute on the list. Any other? Uh, see, see you in. Uh... Uh, Brisbane. See you at next time. Thank you. Bye.